Today we are looking at the topic of destiny, not density, destiny, the topic of destiny. Everybody say destiny. Destiny for some of us is a word that motivates us and encourages us. We might get excited when we hear it. For others of us, destiny is a word that intimidates us. It maybe even makes us feel like a failure. I don't know which of those categories you fall into this morning, but for myself, I can't tell you how many years of internal work it's taken me to become more at peace with the idea of destiny in my own life. When I was in my 20s, I neglected a lot of really important things in my life trying to get somewhere. Now in my 40s, destiny, when I think about it, honestly kind of depresses me. Because I look back at how many years I chased what I believe God had planned for me at the expense of some of my life's most meaningful experiences. I think we all reach a point somewhere early in life where we have some kind of a goal in mind some list of expectation for ourselves. We get to a certain age and we start thinking about what we want to do and where we want to go. And even if we only think of it in our minds, we start to build this ideal path for getting to where we want to go. Maybe that involves a certain type of schooling. Maybe we want to invent something. Maybe we feel like we need to move somewhere. But many of us are taught from a very young age that if we want to get somewhere, we have to plan for it, and we have to stick to that plan at all costs. But very few of us are lucky enough to see that come to fruition exactly as we plan it, right? There's a funny saying that says, for every winner, there are thousands of losers. Chances are, you're one of them. <laughs> I can't think of any other way to illustrate these things other than with pictures. The, ideal, the ideal path for our lives is like a line that moves forward from beginning to end with decisions and challenges and milestones along the way. And if we do everything just right, and if the world around us behaves exactly as we anticipate it will, the plan works its way from beginning to end with no deviations. But if your life has been anything like mine, you found that you get hijacked by things that are beyond your control, right? Let me illustrate that with another picture. This is what life actually looks like. We get detoured over and over again hoping that we will actually get back to the original plan that we had. And if we don't, our lives can end up in a bunch of different places. All of them except for one that we don't want. And the difficult thing is, most people will spend their entire lives trying to get back to a place that they can never go back to. Why? Well, it's because we have a very distorted understanding of how God works his plan in our lives. Our passage for today is a passage that I grew up hearing over and over again as a kid going to church. And as I was studying it over the last few weeks, I saw something in it about my life that I'd never realized before. And it's easy to overlook it if we don't pause and think about what it's really saying to us. Again, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. There is a 
deeply important word here in this passage that I want us to look at during the remainder of our time today. And if you've heard this passage before, maybe you've never seen it either. After all, when it comes to getting what we want out of life, trying to fulfill our plans and our dreams and our hopes, this is one of those passages in Scripture that we often go to for comfort and guidance and support. But I want you to look at one word with me that says something so important about how God works in our lives. It is the word paths. Everybody say paths. Not path, singular. But paths, plural. And whether you understand what this means or not will determine whether your life is lived constantly trying to get back to the plan that you think you're supposed to be fulfilling or whether you adapt to and embrace whatever comes into your life along the way. Understanding this one word in this passage if you are a person of faith, will determine whether your life is a life of regret and frustration and gritting your teeth or a life lived in wonder and awe with open arms. Not path, paths. If you think about what this word is communicating, it's telling us that our lives are a series of many paths, not a single path. In other words, God doesn't envision a single path for your life that runs from beginning to end, straight and perfect, without any changes or detours. In fact, this passage is teaching us the opposite. If you are living your life according to God's plans, it should be filled with detours and changes and challenges. So life with God is not this, and life with God is also not this, but life with God is more something like this. Life with God is a life where all potential paths lead us to the destination that God wants. And that destination is called by many different names. Names like character development, awareness, wholeness, spiritual growth. Emotional maturity. These are the things that God is wanting to lead us to. And God is trying to do this in every human life. Whether we subscribe to it or not. There is no choice that we are capable of making that God is not trying to use to develop us into what he longs for us to be. That is something that gives us great freedom and something that makes us realize how in need we are of closeness with God. The book of Romans in the New Testament says it this way. From your point of view, it looks like God chooses some and leaves others out. But looked at from the long-range perspective of God's overall purpose, all belong to God. God's gifts and God's call are never canceled, never rescinded. You cannot escape God's plan for your life. Even if you don't believe in that. All that you can do, all that you are capable of, is living a life of yielding 
to that or a life of resistance to that? There was a woman named um, Corey Ten Boom who was kind of the Harriet Tubman of the Holocaust during World War II. She put her life and the life of her family at risk hiding Jews from the Nazis in her home and helping them escape. And she said these profound words about this topic of destiny and paths. She writes, Every experience God gives us, every person he puts in our lives, is the perfect preparation for the future. Only he can see. And you might be wondering, great, Ryan, that's, I don't really know what that means, but it sounds positive, it makes me happy. But what am I supposed to do with my life? What's my purpose? Why am I here? What am I supposed to do? I have this thing I want to be. I'm trying to get there and I keep getting sidetracked along the way. What do I do? The answer is very simple. So simple that it's maddening. Go out into the world and live your life. Keep breathing. Stay alive. Work at whatever is in front of you. Be busy at good things in the world. Live your life with God in mind. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. We may think as human beings in these, these boxes that we put ourselves in where we're constantly evaluating and reevaluating ourselves, judging ourselves for all that we're not, everything that we want to be that we're just somehow never getting to. We might think that there are many destinations and many paths, but really, according to God, there are many paths, but there's only one destination. And God uses all of it. And my question to you this morning is, what might your life start to look like if you lived your life from the vantage point that that might just be true. Even if you don't fully believe it yet, even if you never fully believe it, what might your life start to look like if you lived it from that vantage point? Would it change the way that you treat certain people in your life who aren't where you think they should be? Would it change the way that you see yourself when you think about everywhere you want to be that you aren't? Would it cause you to treat yourself and others in your life with more grace, with more openness? Would it cause you to let yourself off the hook for everything that you feel is expected of you? What if God really can use your life no matter how bad you screw it up. What if the wrong choices, those we make by accident, those we make on purpose, what if those in God's eyes are part of the process? What if that's called growing? What if that's called learning? 
The one thing we find in Scripture over and over again, and especially in the life of Jesus, which I think is a, you know, inside of a Christian church, that's, those are pretty good words to listen to, right? The one thing we see over and over again in the life of Jesus is Jesus referring to the Almighty God as Father. I am a dad. I have two children that are constantly screwing things up. I would, I would dare say this morning that for every 100 things that I try to teach my children to do right, 99 of them they do wrong. I remember when both of them were... Uh, learning how to walk and not a single moment inside of myself when they were learning to walk did I ever let them fall and then say to them why can't you just you have two legs there's there's tendons and muscles why can you not just walk no, they falling and not, not doing a good job of it at all. And I was just enjoying watching them try. My son uh, was trying to crack eggs this last weekend. I was teaching him how to make scrambled eggs. And guess what? His scrambled eggs had a lot of shells in them. And he ate them joyfully. <laughs> I didn't scold him. It's part of the process. It's part of learning. And that's how God looks at people, at his children. Even the really bad stuff, God doesn't hate you for it. He's not asking you to gloss it over and say, oh, that's no big deal. It might be a big deal, but guess what? God still wants you to learn something through that. Because God is your father, not your judge. So as you go about your life this week, If you're not prone to doing so, give yourself a break. More importantly, if you're not prone to doing so, give someone else a break. Maybe the world around you doesn't need to behave like you think it does to be worthy of respect and love and grace. Because in the kingdom of God, those things are given on credit, not because they're earned. Let's pray. Mm -hmm.